Hey guys, we're going to be making transparent overlays in this tutorial. We'll take an image, we'll put a transparent layer over the top of it, give it a title and maybe a nice border as well. Only at dreamweavertutorial.co.uk Okay, so here we are. We have a kitten image, a leaf image on a stone. We've got a skyline of a city and a transparent PNG 32 overlay, which we're going to put on top of the images to form a title. Now, if you're watching this in YouTube, I'll put a link in the sidebar. Come to my website, to the page. Sign up for my newsletter while you're there. And uh, just below the video, you'll find a button which says download the Dreamweaver exercise files. It will be in a WinRAR zip file. Just click on that, download the files to your desktop. OK, by now you should have all the images sitting on your desktop. We'll go to site, new site, and we'll create a site called overlay. Now we're going to recreate all the folders ourselves. There's no folders this time, just images. So we'll create a new folder on the desktop and call that overlay as well. And open that. And we're going to create a images file and a CSS folder as well. And uh, so we'll create the CSS folder and uh, go up a level, then create the images folder. And then we'll link those into Dreamweaver and tell them where they are. OK, so select the overlay one, make sure that's selected and press select. And uh, that should appear at the local root folder level and then select on the images. And if it doesn't appear down here, what you can do is you know where the images folder is now. Press select and just type in images into the default images folder section and press OK. Okay, if you did everything correctly, you should have a site called Overlay with an images and a CSS folder inside of it. Now we'll go to the desktop where the folder was saved and there's mine on the left, Overlay. So I'll click on that and I'll copy or I'll grab all of my images that are uh, above the folder line and I'll chuck them into the images folder. Right, all we need to do now is go back into Dreamweaver and uh, we'll click on the refresh button and that should make the images appear in the images folder and Dreamweaver has recognised them. Alright, let's get the show on the road. We'll start a new blank HTML document. So go up to File New and select Blank Document and we want to make sure it's an XHTML 1.0. Press Create and uh, we'll split the screen and go straight into the code separate the body tags and create a nice little space in between okay we're going to create an all-encompassing div so we'll create a wrapper so div id and uh, wrapper and then we're going to split that in the middle and make a little space to put another div tag in and we'll put a comment on the end to say that it's the end of the wrapper tag OK, now before we create any elements inside of our wrapper div, let's create a CSS document. So yeah, I don't know if you remember the last tutorial, what we'll do is we'll click inside of the element div wrapper and we're going to go to create new CSS rule and we'll select a new style sheet from the bottom menu and click OK. Now we'll save it into the CSS folder we created and we can call that overlay and press select. OK, just press OK and we'll select the CSS rule from up here where the document is contained. Now the button's located just to the right of the source code, so just press on that and that will bring up our CSS document. Now we need to create a width and height attribute on the wrapper just to get it out of the way so we can create the rest of our elements. So the first thing we will do is put in a width, so we'll type in width colon and we'll give it a width of 900 pixels and then end that with a semicolon and uh, then we'll put in a height attribute and we'll give it a height of 2000 pixels and also end that with a colon and we should be done. We'll go back into the source code now and we're going to create our first class attribute. 
The first div we're going to create is going to be a div which will hold our image. It's going to be a class attribute so we can repeat it along the page as many times as we want to. So we're going to call this holder. So we'll div class holder and uh, we'll also end it with a comment so we know exactly where the end of that div is so we won't get confused when we carry on creating our attributes. I hope you're all following along so far. If you need to pause it then pause it so you can get all of the information down that you need to. Okay, now we've done that we'll go into our CSS and we'll create a CSS rule for our holder class. When you're dealing with class attributes in the CSS document you'll place a dot in front of all of the attributes. So if it's class holder it will be dot holder so you can manipulate that attribute. If you're dealing with a div with an ID then you would use the pound attribute. Okay, so we'll give the image holder a width of 335 pixels and a height of 245 pixels. Press refresh and you'll see there it appears in our design view. Right, so that's the groundwork laid. Let's now go back into the source code and we're going to insert our first image. Now all of the images are the same width and height, so they're 335 pixels in width and 245 pixels in height. So we'll go in between the holder class and we'll go to insert image, we'll go to our images folder and we're going to pick one of the images now and I think we'll pick the leaf on the stone image and press OK. We'll give it an alternative text of leaf on stone and press OK and that will insert the image there, fantastic. And you can see that the image has created the code in between div class holder. Alright, so if we create a small space just below where we inserted the image, make sure you're still inside the div class holder and we'll create our second class. This one will be to hold the overlay image. So we're going to call this one div class and overlay and we're also going to put a comment on the end so we know that that's the end of that div. Again, so we don't get confused. Many of you might be thinking now that we're probably going to install or insert an image into the overlay class but we're not going to do it like we did with the holder. We're going to insert a background image um, using the CSS. So we'll go back into the overlay CSS document and uh, we're going to insert a background image from there. Now um, create a little space in between the overlay uh, class and you'll notice that the div just appears at the bottom of the image there in blue. Now um, let's give it some attributes. So what we'll do is we'll create the new class which is dot overlay and do the open and close curly brackets. When we first create the CSS rule for the background image it won't initially appear because although we put a div in it doesn't have any dimensions and as it's a background image it won't expand the div to show the image so we'll have to tell the dimensions of the class overlay what the size of the image will be and the height and width of it so insert in the background image we'll go background dash image colon and select it from the browse and pick the transparent PNG that's the 32 bit PNG and put a semicolon on the end and uh, we'll set it to not repeat so we'll go background dash repeat no repeat and put a semicolon on the end of that right before we set the dimensions of the overlay image we're going to go back into the holder class and we're going to set it to a position of relative and that's because we're going to position the overlay class on top of the holder image that we've currently got placed the leaf on the stone Right, once you've set the holder position to relative, we're going to go back into the overlay class and we're going to set that to a position absolute. We're going to absolutely position the overlay image inside of the holder class, which is relative. And if we didn't set the holder class to relative, if we set any positioning like 10 pixels from the top, it's going to give it 10 pixels from the top of the browser window instead of inside the holder div class, which we've already set. Okay, while we're in the overlay class, we'll set the width of the overlay, the image to be 335 pixels, which it is, and a height of 50 pixels, and press refresh, and you're going to see it appears at the bottom there, below the image. Okay, it appears as grey when it's really black, but it's divvered with the white background. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set a position just to gauge where it is, so we'll type in top, colon, and we'll give it a position of 50 pixels from the top just to see where it lies. 
okay so far so good you can see that it's transparent because you can see the rock and the sand behind it now all we have to do is keep adjusting it until we get it into the right position we want it to be in 